More than likely, you've heard of the Linux kernel, but haven't had a chance to really understand what it is and what you can do with it. As a system administrator or forensic examiner, you will probably need to make changes to the Linux kernel to accomplish certain tasks. So in this video, we will be looking at how to make modifications to the kernel by adding and removing modules. The kernel is an integral part of the operating system because it controls the interaction to devices like the keyboard and monitor. It also controls access to disks and the network. The kernel sits between the applications that a user runs and the hardware of the system like the CPU, memory, and devices. The way that Linux system works is that it allows for additional kernel modules to be added or removed. Modules are, by their name, modular, and they can be loaded when needed or at boot time. Periodically, new functionality will need to be supported like a new version of USB or Thunderbolt. From a forensics perspective, you may want to add new kernel modules that allow you to extract memory. The ability to add new modules without having to rebuild and reboot the system is very nice. Wow, 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 is it very nice? And this is the basic idea for loadable kernel modules. The first command we're going to look at is the one that tells us what version of the kernel we are already using. We're going to use the uname command. And this returns with just the word Linux, which is not entirely helpful. So let's run the command again with a dash A option that specifies that we want all the information as opposed to just the basic. From the output, we see that we are running the Linux kernel. Our network host name is demo server. The kernel release is 5.4.0. And then the version number, and we see that it's supporting symmetric multiprocessing. And then the date of the build. And this is followed by the machine name, the processor type, and the hardware platform, which in my case are all x86 underscore 64, as opposed to, uh, you know, 32-bit ARM or 68K or Spark. And finally, the operating system name of GNU Linux. Another way of seeing similar information is with looking at a live file generated by the operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and cat slash proc slash version. And we see that this method gives a little bit more information, like the version of the C compiler and the loader and all that, but essentially the important part, which is the release and version data. But before moving on, I like to run the uname command again, but this time with the dash R option, because this will give us the release name of the kernel. This will come in handy later when we're trying to view the modules. To see what modules are currently loaded in the system, we can use the ls mod command. And I'm going to be piping the output through the less command because there's a lot of modules. And so now we see all of the loaded modules in the system. Uh, the size of the module is in this column. And then lastly here, it looks at the number of modules that use the stated module as a dependency. And you can also view the similar information by looking at a file in slash proc. Uh, the output is not as nice and tidy, but it's essentially the same information. So we can do less slash proc slash modules. Once you have identified all the loaded modules in the system, you can get more information about each one by using the mod info command. So if I type mod info of IWL Wi-Fi, we can see here it gives the full file path for where the module is stored under slash lib slash modules. And then note the .ko extension for these module files because that's how they are named. And you will also see licensing and versioning information and then the description and the author and probably of most interest is the dependencies. In this example, we see that the CFG802.11 
must be in order for the IWL Wi-Fi module to function. All right, so let's take a look a little deeper into the slash lib slash modules folder. I'm going to go ahead and CD into slash lib slash modules and then do an LS. And we see here the subfolders, which are the different architecture. So from what we had done earlier with uname-r, we know that our architecture is the 5.4.0. And so I'm going to go ahead and CD into that folder and do an LS. And here we see more folders, and the good stuff is in the kernel folder. So let's cd in the kernel and do an ls again. And here you can see the split out of all of the other uh, modules from the networking to WireGuard to file systems and so forth. Let's say that for your system, you want to disable anyone from using Wi-Fi. So we're going to remove the module named IWLMVM. But before we remove the module, I will show you that Wi-Fi is currently working. So I'm going to go ahead and ping dash C4 to linux.org. And we do get a response. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the rmmod command to unload the module from the system. So I'm going to type in sudo rmmod iwlmvm. And to confirm that the Wi-Fi is disabled, I'm going to go ahead and redo the ping command. And now we see that there is no response at all. So we confirm that the module for Wi-Fi has been removed. And while we're removing modules, I'm going to remove another um, Wi-Fi module for the next block. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let, do a LS mod and pipe that to grep IWL. And we see that we have another module called IWL Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that one as well. sudo rmmod IWL Wi-Fi. Now let's take a look at an example of adding a module. And to make sure that the modules are not already loaded, I'm going to run the lsmod command with grep of IWL to make sure none of those are loaded. And seeing that neither module is loaded, the command that we're going to use to add is insmod to insert a module, followed by the path of the .ko file. And since I don't have the location memorized for that .ko file, we're going to use the find command to help us. So I'm going to do find of dot dash name iwl wifi .ko. And so now we get this full path back of where the KO file is located. And I'm going to go ahead and do sudo insmod backtick bang bang backtick. So here I'm using a shortcut to interpret the output from the previous command, which is what the bang bang stands for. And by putting those in between the backticks, the shell is substituting the output and putting it there in the command. And after the module is installed, I can check that it worked by doing the ping again. And here we see that we are able to ping linux.org. And then lastly, I'm going to run the lsmod pipe through grep of IWL. And we see that the modules are backloaded. Now that we covered insmod and rmmod, we will be looking at the mod probe command, which is a better and preferred method of loading and unloading modules. To load a module, you can just use mod probe along with the module name, and you don't need to specify the full path to the .ko file because mod probe automatically searches for modules in the standard location of slash lib slash modules. So I can go ahead and do sudo mod probe IWL Wi-Fi. And then I'm going to go ahead and redo the ping command again. And as you can see, the modules are reloaded and ping is back working. Another advantage to mod probe is that it will also load any dependencies to the module that you specified to load. But from when we ran INS mod earlier, it appears that this functionality has also been implemented in INS mod. 
because when I inserted the module for IWL Wi-Fi, it also loaded IWL MVM. And to remove a module, you can use modprobe with the dash R for remove option. So I'm going to do sudo modprobe dash R IWL Wi-Fi. Uh, once again, Linux gives us no feedback. It just comes back with the command prompt. So I'm going to get my own feedback by rerunning the ping again. And now we show that we cannot ping linux.org. So the Wi-Fi module has been removed successfully. All right, so we can also tweak the kernel to adjust for certain behavior by using the syscontrol command. And so to run it, we can just do sysctl a for all the parameters and then pipe that through less because there's going to be a lot of them. And so as we see, basically it lists out all of the options and settings for specific parts of the kernel. And they're categorized by whether they're networking or virtual machine related and, and so forth. And so to change a setting, we can use the dash W option to syscontrol to write out a new value. So let's look at changing the behavior of the network from the ping command. By default, uh, the machine is going to respond to a ping, right? So if we do ping dash C4 of localhost, we see that the machine is responding. We can modify this behavior to ignore pings by turning off any ICMP echoes. So what I'm going to do is do syscontrol dash W, and then I'm going to change the setting for net.ipv4.icmp.echo underscore ignore underscore all, and then I'm going to set it to equal one. And so now, that we have told our system to ignore uh, ICMP echoes, we can rerun the ping command and see that our system no longer responds to pings. And so this change will take effect during runtime, but as soon as the system is rebooted, those settings are lost. And so to make the changes permanent, we can modify the file called etsy syscontrol.conf or any files in the folder that's called slash etsy slash syscontrol.d. Uh, so from a temporary basis, I'm just going to go ahead and vi uh, file called slash temp slash ipv6 dash icmp.conf. And in here, I'm going to add in just one line that says net.ipv6 dot icmp dot echo underscore ignore underscore all equals one. And so that is just the configuration file we haven't loaded into the system yet. So let's go ahead and run the ping six command to look at the behavior of our current machine for a ping on IPv6. So ping six dash C1 localhost. We can see that the system responded. And so now if I want to make the changes take effect from the config file, we can uh, rerun the syscontrol command with a dash P option. So I'm going to do syscontrol dash P of slash temp slash IPv6 dash ICMP dot conf. And once again, Linux gives us no feedback. And so we're going to go ahead and get our own feedback by running ping six again on localhost. And now we see that there is no response on IPv6 as well because we have disabled it in the kernel. So again, you can run syscontrol to change it in a live system or if you change a file that is placed in etsy syscontrol-d, you can make this a permanent thing. Every time it reboots, it will load the configuration from those files. So to wrap up, the Linux kernel is highly flexible and configurable. And with a few commands like lsmod, modinfo, and modprobe, you can view modules, load, and unload them from your system. And with a command like syscontrol, you can also control the behavior of specific parameters of different modules.
For more videos on the Linux command line, make sure you watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.